Hey guys, welcome back to the Girlfriends and Goals podcast. My name is Samaria and I'm joined by my best friend and co-host, Miosha. And today we are back to do an Am I the A-Hole reaction. Now, if you are listening to this on a podcast platform, just know that we have been doing this on YouTube for quite a while now. So mm -hmm. if you enjoy this, go ahead and head over to our YouTube channel and subscribe and, you know, enjoy yourself. We have many mm -hmm. options for you. But if you are watching this on YouTube, we are back and we definitely miss you guys. Also, you can listen to us in your car or wherever else on any podcast platforms because we are there. So don't feel obligated to watch the YouTube videos. Um, if you want to listen to us on the run, you do have that option. So we have been away for a little bit, but we'll give you guys an update on our new podcast episode, which will come out on Friday, both on YouTube and podcast platforms. So, you know, just stay tuned for that. All right. So we're just going to go ahead and hop into the first Am I the A-Hole situation. So this one says, Am I the A-Hole for not wanting my fiance's best friend to be a member of our wedding party? Me... 25 female and my fiance, 26 male, are in the middle of wedding planning. We were dating for three years prior to the engagement and have been friends since freshman year of college. Everything has been absolutely amazing, but the only issue I have is who he has chosen to be in his wedding party. He has a longtime best friend named Brittany. 26 female. They've known each other since elementary school. She didn't go to our college, so I never got to meet her. He has talked very highly of her to me, so I had been excited to meet her. Although they went to different states for college, they still kept close contact. Because they're such good friends, he wants to make her a groomsmaid, if that's the right term. I had no issue with this since she is one of his best friends. Some time after the engagement, I had learned from another of Shane's friends that in high school, they had lost their virginity to each other. This caught me by surprise because I had been told they were purely platonic. I also did not love that this was hidden from me for so long. The next time I saw him, I brought up that I had known about their past and decided that it wouldn't be the best decision to have someone in your bridal party that you used to have sexual relations with. When I told Shane this, he was pissed. He argued that he had promised Brittany a position as a groomsmaid already, and it would be rude to take the offer back. I tried to explain my discomfort with the situation, but feel insensitive since she is such a huge part of his past. I'm not asking for her to be kicked out of the wedding, but I think it is a bit of a slap in the face for him to give her such an important role. Would I be the a-hole? Absolutely not. Okay. Where do we start? Um, Cause I have, I have questions. But yeah, yeah. I have questions. So <laughs> you said that you've never met her even virtually. Mm. I find that to be odd. Okay. I think you said y'all dated for three years prior to the engagement. Uh, but I think it's odd that you haven't met her and I'm going to assume even virtually mm. uh, for him to be so close to her. So for me, I think that's a red flag. He also flat out lied to you because mm. you said that you were told this was a strictly platonic relationship. You know what he's probably going to say? Well, it is strictly platonic now, and it has been since high school or since college. That's what he's going to say when she asks about this. I, I guess that's lying through omission. Or for him, he feels like that's not a lie because at this point it is a platonic friendship. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, for me, I would classify that as lying and Agreed. raises a bigger red flag around trust mm -hmm. because why would you withhold this? And then the fact that he's getting mad that you're addressing like, hey, I don't even I don't want this person up at the front with me on my wedding day. Mm -hmm. This is odd. It's weird. Uh, and the fact that, yeah, he's getting mad about it. That's a problem. Yeah, I also her saying, I'm not asking for her to be kicked out, but I just want her to have a less important role. No, baby, kick her out. <laughs> she don't so need no role. not invited to the wedding at all. I agree. I, if this was someone you were physical with, I don't have any issues with someone having a friend of the opposite gender or whatever. But if you had an intimate relationship with this person, why, why are they here? Why are they, you know, at this major life event that isn't mm -hmm. just yours, but is mine? I don't want them 
to be a major part of my day or my future, to be perfectly honest. So, and I think if he had handled it better, had he been honest with her, because now Mm -hmm. the way my brain works is what else can you not be trusted with? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. You may even need to review if this wedding needs to be happening at all. And that might sound extreme, but the fact that he's getting upset and doesn't see why this is a problem, it would make me question, well, what else obvious things would you not see? Yeah. As a problem? Because you've already you've already done a dumb thing by not disclosing this for a while and waiting until after he didn't even wait until after an engagement. He was never planning on telling her, period. He found out from somebody, somebody else. Somebody else. That's a red flag. He, and that would make me mad. <laughs> right. Like imagine her having this conversation with this random person and they just dropped this gem that she didn't even know was a possibility. And that could make her feel more embarrassed because she didn't know. You It'd weren't one the one to tell she her. She was like, oh, well, I already knew it's not a big deal. Mm-hmm. But that situation alone would make me even more upset, me finding yeah. out from someone else. Like, now I have to play it off like I knew about it or play it off like I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not upset. Like I'm not fuming right now when this person discloses that information to me. So yeah, I think he may And I want to know, mm-hmm. okay, they've been so close, but y'all haven't met. They yeah. didn't go to the same college together. So if this mm-hmm. person you feel is important enough to be in the wedding party, why haven't y'all met? Can we talk about that? So mm. I, I understand that weddings have plus ones, but I- I feel a little bit weird meeting anyone for the first time at, you know, my wedding. But also, if you're going to be in the bridal party, I need to have been around you at some point. I need to know that you passed the vibe check. I need to know the history. I need to know the context of the relationships. Like, if you are going to be a part of this wedding party, maybe I take wedding party parties too seriously. But for me, it needs to be... The people who are closest to me, the people who are supportive of the relationship, the people who 10 years down the line when we're in the marriage and we're having some difficulty, they are for the marriage and they Mm -hmm. want us to come to like a healthy resolution. Like these are people who are there not to just help you on the wedding day, in my opinion, but to help you throughout the marriage. So if she's the op silently, like maybe you're platonic with her, but- I don't know how she still feels about you. And honestly, the way you're overreacting, I don't know how you still feel about her. Right. Maybe they ended up in a friendship space. Like, why why did y'all end up in a friendship space? Exactly. We need more information. No, you're not the a-hole. And I would say if he doesn't budge on this and he's digging his heels in too far, Mm -hmm. I don't know. It just makes you question, why would you... She's not saying you have to break off your whole friendship with this person she's almost taking it lightly she better than me (laughs) because no i just would i just don't i feel like everybody has a past right Mm -hmm. and that is perfectly fine but if you are asking me to join you in a new life i don't know that i want to be confronted with your past often and i understand that there are people out there who are like oh you know if the friendship is if it's platonic now, that's not a big deal. I just mm-hmm. am not one of those people. So I I understand that there are different perspectives and mine is not the only one, but this is mine. So I would feel uncomfortable going into a future where, okay, now this person is at every major event of my life. This person who has mm-hmm. had an intimate relationship with you is now a part of every major occasion of my life forever and ever, amen. I don't like that. Keep popping back up. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't I don't know if this wedding needs to move forward. <laughs> y'all y'all let us know what y'all think in the comments. Yeah. I just think this is this is a very big omission. Mm-hmm. And and for a very long time. And I would like to know the I wanna know the reason for the omission, but also he never I would almost feel better if he had come out and been the one to say it. Like, okay, now I know I haven't told you sooner, but here's the situation. He felt convicted. Something, yes. But he's like, (laughs) he's not budging. He thinks he's justified. Mm -mm. 
Yeah, y'all let us know what y'all think. I I don't think she's the a-hole. And I think both Samara and I agree. All right, let's get into the next one. Am I the a-hole? Bachelorette party is way too expensive. To make a long story short, my friend asked me to be a bridesmaid. I said yes. The wedding will be in Florida near the end of March, spring break time. And the maid of honor has not reached out to anyone about budgets for a bachelorette party. I just got a text and the trip will be in Nashville and the Airbnb is like $700 per person and will be a month before the wedding. They're asking for half of the amount for making a down payment this weekend. Round ticket tips will be likely $300, so just traveling in the room is pushing $1,000 just for a weekend trip. After eating, drinking, Ubering for a long weekend, it's probably going to push $1,500 in total. The wedding is a month later, and tickets for spring break travel near Miami will easily be four to $600 a person. The dresses the maid of honor is asking us to look at start off at $200. Then we're also being expected to use a stylist that they like who charges another $200 per person. Am I the a-hole for thinking this is way too much of an ass for a bridesmaid? Like, technically, yes, I could afford it if we had had months to save before making an initial payment, but no budgets were discussed before the bomb was dropped today, and I'm honestly kind of mad that I'm being asked to drop $400 in the next day or two. I'd almost rather talk to the bride and somehow ask if she'd be all right with me stepping down and just attending as a guest. Mm -hmm. Am I the a-hole? I don't think you are. I don't think you are. I don't know how other people's, you know, like weddings work and their mm -hmm. planning works, but to me, it is a little bit weird for it to just all be decided by one person who isn't aware of the budgets of everybody, you know? And then mm -hmm. the short term notice, I think, is a bit much. I don't think she's the a hole for talking to the bride and saying, hey, this is just too much too soon. Um, and I can't do it. Mm, okay. So no a-hole. No. Do you think she should talk to the bride directly about it or go to this maid of honor who's done all the planning? I think she should go to the bride because the bride was the one who asked her to be a bridesmaid, right? She mm -hmm. doesn't even know the maid of honor from, from mm -hmm. if I'm reading this correctly. So if she needs to step down because the price is too high, I think she needs to go directly to the bride and say, hey, mm -hmm. I would love to support you on your day, but I just got the text and it's just too much for me and too soon. I would need a little bit more time to plan for this. So I'm going to have to ask to step down and just be a guest to the wedding. Yeah, I think... Um... I don't think that it was any malicious intent. No. I think for some people, when they go into the wedding planning process, they see things like the bachelorette, the bridal shower, all the festivities um, as more of a one direction effort in terms of maybe what the bride wants. Mm. And so I could see it being a situation where the bride maybe expressed her desires and the maid of honor took on trying to meet them instead yeah. of it being a more collaborative situation. Okay. Um, I think some people think like, oh, it's my day, it's my celebration, mm -hmm. and it extends beyond um, the wedding day. I also think if you do have plans and exactly how you want them done for the festivities outside of your wedding day, I think you have to be open and comfortable with the fact that maybe everyone can't participate. Right. Or... Um, people may only be able to participate in certain things. Um, like if you yeah. want it how you want it, then that's just what comes with it. I don't think you're the a-hole. And I just think maybe, I don't know, I see this situation way too often. <laughs> I think people just need to have more conversations up front about expectations and people be honest about maybe what they're able to do mm -hmm. up front versus not. And when you're a part of a bridal party, talk about maybe what's the strategy. Mm-hmm like well before because this seems kind of last minute yeah to, to to be honest within the last let's say year or so my ideas about bridal party like I don't think you should accept unless it's someone who's like one of your closest friends because mm -hmm. this person has an idea of what your pockets look like and maybe they'll keep that in mind as they're planning I don't think the bride is doing anything wrong if this maid of honor is acting on her, on the bride's request, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. 
I just think this person clearly doesn't want to afford it or cannot afford it right now. It's going to put a financial strain. And I don't think there's anything wrong with knowing your circumstances and saying, hey, I have to pull out. I want to support you in a certain way. Um, I wanted to support you in this way, but now I'm realizing I can't do that. Or, I don't know, is this acceptable in that, hey, I would love to be able to support you on your day, Mm -hmm. but I maybe can't do all the festivities leaving up, maybe because I do have to travel in for the wedding already. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, it's it's maybe the totality of it and not just the one specific thing. Uh, Because she mentioned the dresses and obviously, you know, her getting a hotel and everything when she Mm -hmm. has to travel for the actual wedding. So... All in all, she could end up spending, sounds like upwards of three thousand, two to three thousand dollars for yeah. her wedding. So, yeah, mm-hmm. those are my thoughts. I don't know. Did you have anything else to add? No, other than hopefully the bride is understanding. I okay, mean, or else you're gonna have to respond to this and let us know. <laughs> it's gonna be another Mideo situation where she tells you, "No, girl, you mm-hmm. stuck at this wedding party." No, I'm kidding. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, that's that's it for this episode. Uh, again, if you're listening on a podcast platform, but you want to comment to us, feel free to find us on YouTube. It's Girlfriends and Goals Podcast, um, or on Instagram, you can send us a DM at Girlfriends and Goals Podcast. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and let us know in the mm-hmm. comments below what you're thoughts are and we'll see you guys on the next video bye bye